as hurtful as it is, it's always a better idea. If you're planning to get married and you don't feel it or you start feeling an internal feeling like this is not going to work or it's not a good idea, it's wise to listen to that gut. Doesn't mean you have to call it off completely, but it does usually mean if you have that feeling and it's strong, postponing it is going to be in yours and your partner's favor. I'm seeing right someone right now, and I've been seeing him a couple months. His fiance canceled the wedding. And although it's been hurtful, it's been a process, there were things that she reported seeing that she felt so deeply. She just knew that if she committed to a marriage, it would not go well. They would end up in a lot of strife and confusion and probably have to end it anyway. I decided I'm going to make a YouTube about things that are worthwhile reasons to call off your wedding. And this is my list. First of all, you can't accept your partner as they are. You have this idea that when you marry them, you think they're change and you hope they change because there's some part of them you find unacceptable. If you find that, if you feel that before the wedding, please postpone the wedding. You are not ready. By the time you are going to walk down that aisle, there should be all parts of that partner you can accept. It doesn't mean you necessarily like it, but you accept it and you understand it's probably not going to change and that's okay. Secondly, your partner doesn't want to go to pre-marriage counseling. They will go on their own and they've been going on their own for years, but it's the couple's counseling they're against. I wouldn't walk down the aisle with them. The reason is because if they are not ready to address some issue that's going to come up with the two of you, then that means more than likely they're hiding something, especially if they're already in therapy and they're working on issues with the therapist you should have an understanding of what those issues are and those issues will interact with your marriage if you are to marry. So it's very important that couples are open to it and even suggest it. We do have evidence that when couples go to pre-marriage counseling, they usually do better in their marriage. Next, you haven't discussed future plans and your partner doesn't want to plan. Okay, I'm all for spontaneity, but not if this is a person that's going to share your life. You guys need a five-year vision back up. We need a one-year vision, a five-year vision, and a 10-year vision. This vision includes what you want for your marriage. Do you want children? Do you want a home? Do you want to be renters for life? Where do you want to live? What faith do you want to practice? This is all part of future planning. What's going to be good for the both of you? If one of you isn't religious and you want a spiritual community as yourself, that's going to be very difficult being married to someone who doesn't want that unless they're willing to embrace it. If your partner is adamant that they don't want that, this is something to really postpone your wedding over, especially if you are a faithful person, if you have a strong faith, and if God is supposed to be central in your marriage. You're going to need a partner that embraces that. And if they don't, it's better you know up front so you can make other plans. Fourthly, you haven't dated for a year. If you've only been together two or three months and you're getting married, that's rushed. I mean, most of the time we really like to see a couple go through all four seasons. You should be together at least a year. Make that engagement a little bit longer. On the same side too, if you've been engaged forever and one of the partners is resentful about getting married, I wouldn't marry that person. I would postpone it. Or I would just wait and really evaluate, is this someone you that's really going to be good marriage material? There's something obviously that they're resisting with it if they've been dating you that long and has, haven't made a move or some kind of an advancement to the next stage, which is engagement and marriage. You're doing it for the wrong reasons. If you're getting married to satisfy a family member, a parent, 
or some quota at work or some passport status, that is a terrible reason to marry this person because everybody changes every day. And whenever you make such a dire choice to please someone else, then that means you're putting yourself as second. You're the main partner here. You cannot relinquish that responsibility to someone else and expect it to be a great marriage. And lastly, if your partner's already cheated on you, whether an emotional affair, a physical affair, a betrayal of money, whatever the betrayal was, man, I'd be really careful about signing, signing a document, being married to this person, possibly bringing children into the world with this person. If they had cheated before, because sometimes cheating doesn't lead to another cheating, but it depends how they worked it through it. Did the two of you go to counseling? Did you talk about it? Did you learn lessons about it? Are you willing to protect your relationship, your marriage in the future? Are you willing to put down strong boundaries? Can you trust this person to say no? Is this person a people pleaser with blurry boundaries? That's going to make a huge difference in the way this person is able to, to basically commit and say, I promise and make a vow that they can actually honor. These are my therapeutic reasons that I would postpone a wedding or perhaps cancel it. There are many, many more. If you see sensitivities in other areas, listen to your gut and don't walk down that aisle until you're ready.